What if I told you that this low-end PC was optimized by an AI? Yup, I let AI take full control of tweaking this old PC, but the real question is did it actually work or did AI just break the only PC that I could afford with my broke wallet? Let's find out. Before starting with the optimizations, I benchmarked 3 games, those being Fortnite at competitive settings and I was getting about 135 average FPS, which I mean are not that bad considering the PC but we can definitely improve it by a lot. Next was well with 280 average FPS which honestly is pretty damn good but I have optimized this game to over 300 FPS on other older machines so let's see what the AI does. And finally we got Rocket League with 196 average FPS on all high settings. However an interesting thing about Rocket League is that if you apply the wrong GPU optimizations it can actually drop FPS by a lot. So I'm really curious to see what happens there. Overall for an unoptimized PC the benchmarks aren't really that bad. So I basically told the AI to give me a complete PC optimization guide for Windows to get more FPS in games like Fortnite, Valorant and Rocket League. Following are my PC specs which I mean you can read for yourself too, it's quite a low end PC. And it just gave me this whole list of things to do so let's go over them and let's hope that it doesn't break Windows or this PC because I'm literally broke. So this is the response that the AI came up with. The first thing that it wants me to do is update the Windows but not bloat it. Install the latest security and feature updates but avoid any unnecessary optional features. So yeah, let's go ahead and open up the Windows settings and inside of updates as you can see that the only updates I have available are the optional quality updates and these are the ones that it doesn't want me to install so we're just gonna go ahead and skip these. But we have other Windows settings so let's just minimize this and the second one is to remove bloatware. We need to uninstall pre-installed apps that you never use, for example Cortana, Xbox Game bar etc. For that let's head back to the settings and let's go back to home. Then let's move on to the windows apps and then inside of the installed apps I'm just gonna go ahead and scroll through all of these and uninstall the ones that I don't use such as this microsoft people let's uninstall it. So yeah after uninstalling all of those let's close out of this and move on to the next step that is startup apps and services. So it wants me to disable everything that is non-essential such as Spotify, Discord and even OneDrive. So yeah let's open up the task manager. Let's head on to the startups and most of the things I have already disabled here. As you can see that the Adobe stuff is disabled, I will also go ahead and disable lively wallpapers. Now for Vanguard of course you do need it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it enabled. Other than that everything is pretty much good here. And the other thing that it wants me to do is disable any background apps from the windows privacy settings. So for that we will need to head to the windows settings once again, then go on to the privacy settings. I'm just gonna turn these off as well. Let's scroll down to the background apps and let's turn it off. For the windows 11 users of course you would have to go through each and every one of these apps and then disable the background activity but in windows 10 it's really nice that you can just toggle this switch off. Next up is a power plan. It wants me to actually use the high performance power plan or enable the ultimate performance power plan. So for that what I'm gonna do is go to the start menu and then open up the power plan. Let's just go ahead and click on edit power plan then go to the power options and as you can see that I have already selected the high performance power plan but we will be going ahead and importing the ultimate power plan so let's go back here let's copy this code let's go to the start menu once more and search for powershell and then I'm gonna go ahead and run it as an admin once inside of here I'm simply gonna go ahead and paste the command that we just copied and hit enter and now it has been successfully imported so now let's go back and open up the power plans once more choose a power plan and as you can see we have the ultimate performance power plan here. So I'm just gonna simply check this one and also I'm gonna go to change plan settings and make sure that both of these options are set to never because I don't want my PC display to turn off and then hit save changes. With that we can close out of this and then move on to the GPU optimizations. So since I told it that my GPU is this one the AMD RX 580 it went ahead and gave me the optimizations for that specific GPU. The first thing that it wants me to do is update the drivers to the latest ones which I have already done while I was installing this newer windows. Then in the software it wants me to change a few settings. Let's head on to the desktop and open up the AMD software. Under the graphics settings we have already set it to custom so 
let's just simply go through everything that it wants me to go through and then change that. The first thing is to disable Radeon Chill, Enhanced Sync and Radeon Anti-Lag unless you specifically want them. So as you can see that the Anti-Lag, Chill as well as Enhanced Sync are already all disabled. Then it wants me to set the texture filtering quality to performance. Sure, let's go ahead and go to the advanced and texture filtering quality. It is set to standard, so let's just put it on to performance. Turn on tessellation mode and overwrite it with X8 or application controlled. So for the tessellation mode, let's go ahead and overwrite it, set it to like 8x that is what it wanted me to do or maybe use the application settings i guess i'm gonna go ahead and use the application settings because then we can go into the games themselves and customize it there then it wants me to turn off frame rate target control unless capping fps intentionally so it basically it wants me to disable this frame rate cap which i have already done then it also wants me to perform a clean driver install using the ddu which i have already done because i was installing these drivers for the sake of the video so let's move on to the cpu optimization it wants me to disable power saving features such as C states or speed step in case of Intel one in the BIOS settings. Now for that of course I cannot record so yeah I will be doing that at the end of the video. For now let's move on to the second thing and that is to make sure that your CPU is not throttling. It wants me to use hardware in 464 software to monitor the temps and it also wants me to keep the temps under 70 to 80 degrees celsius and reapply the thermal paste if the old one is not doing it. So this is more of a physical thing to do with the PC but the thermal paste that comes with your cooler is generally better than the one that you reapply. Well the temps were actually good already hovering between 50 and 60 degrees for both the CPU and the GPU. It's in celsius for my american friends although the GPU did heat up a bit in intense scenarios. So for now let's just move on to the next step and that is storage optimizations. Now if you're using a hard drive it tells you to migrate your games and the windows to an SSD. Now I already have my windows installed on the SSD. However, for the game, it is still on a hard drive. The reason for that is because my SSD isn't just large enough. Then it wants us to run the disk cleanup as well as enable storage sense. Now the enabling of storage sense is not really a good idea, especially if you have a low-end PC. The reason is because if you are playing a game and it suddenly just decides to clean up some temporary files, it will hog up the CPU resources and you will of course experience significant stutters and frame drops inside of your game. But for the sake of the video, let's go ahead and search up the storage sense. Let's go on to the turn on storage sense and then just go ahead and turn it on. Then we can close out of this, go back to the start menu once again and run the disk cleaner. I'm gonna select my windows drive, hit ok and then we're just gonna go ahead and select everything except the DirectX shader cache because it has a lot of the game assets that you don't want to keep caching again and again. So make sure that that one is unchecked and then hit ok and it's going to clean about 400 MBs of data. Once that is done we can move on to the ram and page file optimizations so 16 gigs of ram is good ensuring it's running in dual channel mode and we can check that by going to the task manager going under performance and then memory and as you can see that the slots used are two out of two which means that both of my ram sticks are running in dual channel we can close out of this and we need to manually set the page file to system manage or custom size on the ssd and for the custom size it recommends 1.5 times the total ram amount so in order to apply this one you will need to go to the start menu and then go ahead and search for advanced system settings and as you can see this is the option right here so simply just click on it then click on the settings then go under advanced then click on change you will have this automatically manage paging file checked make sure that this one is unchecked then click on your ssd and set it to system manage size so let's just simply go ahead and click on set hit ok and you will need to restore your pc for these changes to take effect so simply hit ok and we will be restoring later another thing is make sure that you have adjust for best performance under the programs one more thing that you actually can do inside of here which it does tell in the next step and that is to disable unnecessary visual effects for this one you will need to go to the visual effects tab and then just go ahead and set it to best performance now that would be the best option however if you apply this your windows animations and everything will be turned off and the font will look actually horrible for that it does recommend that you turn on smooth edges of screen font which is this one as well as show thumbnails instead of icons which is this one another one that i do recommend is actually use drop shadows for icon labels on desktop because without it the desktop icon 
icons just look out of place so simply hit apply hit ok and now we can hit ok here as well and we will be restarting later moving on to the network tweaks for latency it recommends using ethernet instead of wi-fi which i highly recommend because no matter how good your wi-fi is your ethernet will always be better the second step is to update your network card driver which we have already done but if you haven't just go to the manufacturer's website and download the latest drivers from there instead of updating them from the device manager because that driver will not only be like more up to date but it will also be a lot better than the one that windows automatically selects through the device manager up next it wants me to change a few nic properties for that let's go ahead and open up the start menu and search for device manager and then open it up once inside of here simply go ahead and locate your network adapter expand it down right click on the network adapter that you are using and then click on properties then go to the advanced tab so the two settings that we need to disable here are the interrupt moderation so make sure that this is disabled as well as large send offload for both the ipv6 as well as ipv4 just simply go ahead and disable both of these and another thing that i recommend inside of here is go to the power management and make sure that all of these are unchecked then go ahead and hit ok now we can close out of this next up is the game mode and gpu scheduling for this one we will need to go ahead and open up the settings and make sure that the game mode is turned on let's go to settings and then gaming and then go ahead and turn on the game mode and for the next setting i'll have to go to the graphic settings and then turn on hags inside of here since i do not have that option i'm just gonna skip that one but another thing that i can do inside of here is simply add a game let's go ahead and maybe add fortnite for Fortnite game binaries win64 and i'm gonna add this launcher hit add then go to options and set it to high performance and save now i can close out of this and we are basically done with game mode and gpu scheduling however it does say that you should turn on variable refresh rate if your monitor supports freezing which mine does not so i'm just gonna skip this one next are the temperature and overlay management so it tells me that i should disable overlays such as the steam overlay discord overlay radeon and the xbox game bar overlay let's start with the xbox game bar let's go on to the settings once again and gaming make sure that the game bar is turned off and this is unchecked also make sure that the captures are turned off moving on to the radeon overlay so for those of you who are using nvidia gpus you will need to go to the nvidia app and turn off the nvidia shadow play there but for me what i'm gonna do is open up the radeon software and go into the settings and then under preferences let's go ahead and disable the in-game overlay i'm also just gonna go ahead and disable the advertisements and and toast notifications and that's it let's close out of this and for the discord and steam i don't have both of these installed on this pc but if you do then go ahead and turn off the overlays from there as well which i know that you have been taught a million times and you already know how to do that it says that these eat up the cpu and gpu cycles which if you don't know cpus and gpus process the processes or the threads in the form of cycles one after another so this is basically going to free up those cpu cycles so that it can process the actual game data instead of these overlays moving on to the 10th the final and the advanced option which is labeled optional for some reason and the first thing that it wants me to do is disable the full screen optimizations for each game you can follow this process to do it for all of the games i'm just gonna go ahead and show it for fortnite open up the epic games launcher once it opens up go on to the library then click on the three dots under fortnite and click on manage then under the installation you will have this folder icon so let's just click on it then go to fortnite game binaries win 64 scroll down until you can find this first .exe file simply right click on it and go to properties then under the compatibility make sure that disable full screen optimizations is checked click on change high dpi settings and override it using the application then hit ok apply ok and now we can close out of this and you can simply go ahead and repeat this for all of the games i'm just gonna go ahead and do it for rocket league and valorant as well now that we're done with all of that let's move on to the next one and that is for lowering the input lag so in the radeon settings it wants me to enable the low latency mode only if my fps are greater than my refresh rate so i have a 60 hertz monitor and of course i do get well over the 60 fps however this is a really bad setting to turn on because we have tested it a lot but for the sake of the video since ai did recommend it i'm just gonna go ahead and turn it on for that i'll have to of course go to the amd software once again and inside of gaming then and graphics I'll need to go ahead and turn on the Radeon anti-lag which is basically that setting it's just a different name so I have enabled it 
Let's move on to the last one and that is to update the BIOS if you're using an older version. Now I did end up updating my motherboard BIOS but for most of you guys I wouldn't really recommend it unless you know what you are doing because anything wrong can literally break your motherboard. So yeah then there is the quick checklist for everything that we have basically done. We have applied all of these one by one and for the results that we can expect it says that we can expect 10 to 30% FPS uplift in the CPU limited scenarios such as Valorant and Rocket League, lower stutters, more consistent frame rates meaning less FPS drops and lower latency in online matches which basically means lower ping. Well it's time to test that. So after all the optimizations here are the benchmarks for Fortnite. Was it a 10 to 30% improvement as promised in the FPS? Well actually I calculated everything and the average FPS improved by 6.45%. However the 1% lows actually improved by 25.98% and the 0.1% lows improved by 21.98%. So the average improvement comes out to a total of 18.1% which I mean is what the AI told us to expect between 10 and 30% improvement. However same was not the case with Valorant. The average FPS improved by just 1.22% while the 1% lows dropped by minus 7.23% and the 0.1% lows well they dropped by a negative of 12.35%. So the overall improvement well there was no improvement. The performance decreased by minus 6.12% overall. I believe it's because of some of the questionable GPU settings like the anti-lag one but let's move on to Rocket League. The average FPS improved by 6.96% while the 1% lows increased by 1.55% and the 0.1% lows well they improved quite a lot with 27.59% and in total the FPS increased by 12.03% which is quite nice. From these results we can say that it's not as good as manually doing the tweaking with research but can Considering the settings it showed, it can be a good starting point for any beginner, unless of course you play Valorant. Oh and there's one more very important thing that I forgot to tell you. 